Welcome back. Today I'm taking a look at electrolyzers. So this is a base that I was just doing a lot of testing in using the debug mode to figure out things and I started patterning out these electrolyzers and I noticed that they were over pressurizing quite often and then not becoming efficient at all. They were reducing their efficiency because there was just too much pressure in whatever chamber they were contained in. So I ran an experiment yesterday that went on for about an hour and a half and got so complicated that I figured I'm just going to try to summarize it in another video rather than try to edit all of that recording so that I can tell you what is the most efficient way to run one of these electrolyzers in a confined space and how that compares to being in an open space. So just to give you an idea of how the test went, I actually had different volumes where I was starting off, let's say eight tiles, and then I had 16 tiles, 24 tiles, 32 tiles in different arrangements, horizontal and vertical. And what I found is that everything after 16 tiles doesn't necessarily really matter. Once it builds up to a certain pressure, the pump, these gas pumps can only move so much air. And at that point, you know, your electrolyzer is no longer efficient because your pump can only move so much air. Another point is that when you have gas pumps, their entire system can become a bottleneck if you have like too many things running through something like a gas filter. Here I have three pumps, but there's this big queue that lines up to this gas filter because it can only process so much stuff. That's one area that can really hinder your efficiency of your entire system. All right, so here is my test bench. I have my electrolyzer that is just in open air right now, so that'll be my control, how much that produces. And then I have my electrolyzer in an enclosed space right here with up to five pumps that can run and suck air away from this electrolyzer. And I'm going to go ahead and record those numbers and see if it matches what I found yesterday. All right, so as you can see right here, this electrolyzer is just running on its own in a nice open area. But even though it's doing that, it's not running at its optimal performance. If it were, it would be using one kilogram per second of water. It would be emitting 888 grams a second of oxygen with 112 grams of hydrogen being produced every second. However, even though it's in this open space right here where it isn't, you know, that dense, I ran several, several cycles with no oxygen being produced. You know, I mean, look at it over here. It's 420 grams of oxygen. However, once you get closer, it's still bouncing off of that max gas pressure. It can't get the air away from it fast enough, so it just bounces off that. So it's not running 100% efficient right there. Not even close, really. So at this point, I can only produce so much oxygen with a electrolyzer in open air. The other thing I'm also doing here, just for the sake of this test, so you guys know, I'm using a cheat engine program, which you can use a speed hack. So once you do this, it actually allows you to speed up faster than 3x because I have several cycles and I'm just going from one to another. Um, I'm using this, look at that, boom, and then it runs a little bit faster. Just so you know, when the game's running this fast, that's what I'm doing to get it. All right, so in that one day, I was able to produce 300 kilograms of oxygen. Not bad. Now, just for the sake of it, I'm going to let that run for another day and see what that number produces. You'll find that the numbers are not equal. It's not that static of an environment. There is stuff going on here. Obviously, we're building up pressure in this entire area, you know, as we're producing more and more oxygen. That's probably going to affect things. It's just very, it's not a static environment at all. So that's what you get. All right. So day two, 267.9. All right, so for the last five days, I've seen a reduction in the efficiency of this electrolyzer. It's gone from 300 to 267 to 230 to 217 to 193. It just keeps going down and down as the amount of oxygen in this total space starts to get become more dense. And there it is, 180. So you can see how that's kind of working backwards. So this is kind of a fun tip. Um, as you pump, you can actually run this through a filter and then use the pipe to build up a large volume of something like hydrogen right here. So that way your hydrogen generator isn't just always, you know, jumping on and off. And then you can run your filter strategically as well once you get a decent amount of hydrogen built up in whatever area you need to filter out. That's just a way to kind of control in a batch as, you know, compared to just letting it run constantly. It's pretty useful. Every once in a while you'll need a cycle where you don't want anybody on your hamster wheels. You know, that's a good way of doing it. Here's another interesting thing. These batteries over here were overheating. So what I'm doing is I'm drip cooling them. Now this is a direct descendant of the waterfall 
tactic I used previously trying to make steam. However, in this case, I'm actually like drip cooling them. Because surprisingly enough, even though they were in this cold area, they were actually still overheating. You can see broken buildings up there. There was a bunch of batteries that overheated previously. I thought the cold area here would be enough to keep them, you know, from overheating, but that's not the case. You can see they're still quite warm, but this liquid valve is running only at 30.4 grams a second. Now, obviously, I could still have a pump down here and just make it a recirculating system and then do another cool thing, which, which would actually be running that pipe out into a cold area so it's a radiator. So you're actually sucking heat away that way. I'll get into that later. You know, we'll do that as another experiment. Let's get back into the oxygen though. All right, so now I'm gonna run the same test, but I'll be running the electrolyzer on the top here inside that enclosed area with one pump to see what those results are gonna be. So you can see right here, I mean, it's pumping it out, it's doing pretty good, and it's actually maintaining an area so that none of these are over pressurizing. That's pretty cool. I'm glad that that's not happening. The pump itself, though, look, still, it's, it's bouncing off of max pressure constantly, so it's definitely not running efficiently at all. All right, so here it is, the end of the last day for the one pump test, and what I have is 141. So if we'd like, take a look at the results over the last couple of days. You've seen right here, this is for one pump, one air pump, uh, 137, 126, 135, very, very consistent numbers. All right, so I'm testing the two pump system now. I'm only going to run these for three cycles now just to get an average rather than six. So if we look at the electrolyzer now, you can see that it's still kind of bouncing off of max pressure every once in a while. But the numbers are starting to show a story here. So as we're looking here, we have a 231 average of the six day open air. You saw that redu reduced down. So, and then we had the one pump, which was only 135 kilograms. With the two pump, you're able to get 241 average, so 240, more or less, with two pumps right there. And that increased its efficiency. All right, so the three day average for the three pump setup right there was 309. So that's actually working out pretty good. However, it's starting to consume a lot of energy. All right, so will four pumps see yet another efficiency improvement with the electrolyzer? Let's find out. Look at it go! <laughs> wow. Okay, that is moving a lot of stuff right there. I'm going to go ahead and enable my hydrogen generator so I make sure I have enough electricity. Let's just take a look at the gas. Yeah, look at that thing move all over the place. That's pretty cool. Would you look at that? 415 for the first day result. All right, it's time for the big one. Five pumps around one electrolyzer. Let's see if this works. I'm thinking this is where we're gonna see the limit. It's gonna take a ton of power though. Yeah, make that gas, make it happen. Look at this. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, so if you look at this electrolyzer right now with running five pumps around it, Believe it or not, every once in a while, it's still bouncing off max pressure. But it's pretty close to producing at its maximum number right there. You can see it's using one kilogram of water constantly. Or just about constantly. Every once in a while, it has a little bit of a hiccup. You know what that means? There's only one more test I can do. Six pumps. All right, who's ready for some circuit overload? <laughs> <laughs> Six gas pumps next to an electrolyzer. Let's see what happens. Look at the power. It, it just can't handle it. What's running? Oh, this is running. That's too much. Let's disable that. Woo! Uh, yeah, it's pretty much operating just about at maximum right there. Look at that. 1.7, 1.9. <laughs> That's insane. All of this for one electrolyzer. Oh, there we go. We finally reached the limit. 498.7. If we take a look at the electrolyzer, every very, very, very rarely it will bounce off a maximum. But this is as stable as it gets. Look at that. 498.7. I know what you're thinking. Well, you gotta go for seven. Even if it blows up your circuits, you still gotta go for seven. And for the sake of this, I'm gonna just 
throw wires everywhere. Not that it increases my current, but if something blows up, I hopefully have another path to travel. <laughs> That's the idea. Oh my gosh. Just run pipes this way. There you go. This is the least practical system on the I've ever made. Now I know what you're thinking. Obviously, you could just put in a battery pack and another power station to run, I don't know, half your pumps and then the other half so that you don't overload your circuits. But all I'm saying is what fun would that be? I want to make a very good YouTube video. You got to watch your circuits blow up as you're trying to get every last bit out of this electrolyzer. And that's what this next cycle is going to be. 100% efficiency, man. What it takes. All right. Let's flip the switch on this beast. How is this running? It's still bouncing off max pressure, just ever so slightly. Let me go ahead and turn the speed boost off here. <laughs> Look at how slow this is. Man, when you've been watching like 20x speed for an hour and a half like I have, this is like slow motion. Maybe it actually is slow motion, I don't know. Look at how fast they're moving. Everything looks slow motion. Oh man. I don't know, maybe don't try that cheat engine thing. Current status? Uh, bounces up to 2.2. So it does overload a little bit, but not too bad, actually. Things may not fry at this rate. That's just kind of fun. Look at how many wires there are. All right, so what was that report? Ah, uh, 491.6. That was even worse. All right, so let's take a look at the results. From my test here, over the six day average open air, produced 231 kilograms of oxygen on average or so. Obviously, the closer you are to whatever that thing is putting out, as compared to how much you're consuming, the more steady that's going to be. And it's going to be the most efficient because when you do look down here, the total power required to run an electrolyzer is 360 watts. Um, if you consider that the liquid pump is 240 watts when it's running, and then you don't need an air pump, so that's zero, and the electrolyzer itself is 120. So that's going to be its efficiency, and that's also going to be my standard, so everything else is relative to that. So with one pump and up from right there, you see that um, one pump operates at 58% efficiency. So it's, it's nearly... Well, I guess it's six tenths more or less of, of what you get out of having just open air. So it doesn't make sense at all to put an electrolyzer in a closed space if you only are going to use one air pump right there. And that just doesn't work. Not only is that not a good idea, you're also using 600 watts of power. So that's more than one duplicate just to make some air at that point. You got to run a whole coal generator 24 seven. When you step up to two pumps right here, you're producing just about as much as you are with an open air system on average. Uh, we're seeing 104% efficiency right there. So that's not bad. However, it is costing you 840 watts. So you gotta have a good electrical system if you're gonna wanna use that. The benefit to doing that at that point though is that you can capture that um, hydrogen very, very easily and then potentially power up a hydrogen generator for certain cycles when you're going to need more power. Another good benefit of that is that you can run it through a thermal regulator and then cool that air that's coming out of there as well. Three pumps, we see another efficiency increase. So we're up to 134.9%, so 135%. So we've gained 35% efficiency, but it's costing us a, over a kilowatt of power. Four pumps, at this point, things have gotten ridiculous. However, uh, further testing may prove that if you put multiple electrolyzers in there, this might also increase the efficiency yet more, but that's going to have to be a, another video for another time. Uh, we see this improve to 178% efficiency. So that's actually worth it. If you're going to go to three pumps, you might as well go to four pumps at that point and use up a lot of power, but at least you're going to be producing a ton of oxygen. At this point though, uh, five pumps and more, you're starting, you're starting to reach the upper limits of what you can do. So we've jumped up to 106% improvement, so a 206% efficiency right there with a 1.5 kilowatt consumption. So that's, you're gonna need heavy wires at that point. Well, you're gonna need heavy wires at four pumps and beyond unless you're getting kind of creative with how you're delivering your power. Six pumps only sees a small improvement from five pumps and seven pumps was no, not really any different at all. 
um, from six so it wasn't even worth testing not to mention the amount of power it was consuming now taking a look at a couple of these graphs this chart over here on the left is the amount of power it takes to get you know oxygen at this point and you can see that this is increasing dramatically and the amount of oxygen you're producing is not necessarily increasing that much so the data shows you what it is percentage wise up there probably a little bit better than this chart the chart on the right here is the amount of oxygen being produced compared to its efficiency so red is oxygen and blue is efficiency at this point percentage wise i don't know kind of an interesting thing that was a fun experiment it took a while but i think it was worth it and it also highlights a couple of ideas what happens if you put more electrolyzers in an enclosed space but the same amount of pumps does the efficiency average out or does it end up working better i think there's more that we can learn there anyhow thanks for watching guys hopefully you guys have enjoyed this informative episode of oxygen not included if you did let me know down there in the comment section below if there's other things you want me to test i like doing things like this they are a little bit more technical and this game is does provide quite a bit of challenge when it comes to figuring this stuff out but i'm willing to try new stuff if i've earned your subscription then thank you so much for that have a great day guys stay awesome peace Brothgar out.